In this video, I examine the effects of broadband Gaussian noise on the FT8 protocol. In this test, I look at the influence of Gaussian noise uh, upon our test signals. I've captured um, 30 second segments of Gaussian noise and that Gaussian is the distribution <clears throat> of the signal across the time spectrum. It's also called white noise sometimes or thermal noise. Uh, there are four 30 second segments which I've stitched together and we'll see how they impact our signal um, and we will do that by changing the level of the noise while keeping our signal level constant. Gaussian noise is sometimes called QRN by amateur radio operators is a natural noise it's also called thermal noise and it's inherent in any electronic equipment. The noise factor of the equipment it, uh, contributes to the noise above uh, the natural noise floor which is determined by uh, Boltzmann's constants. A typical noise floor of a receiver might be on the order of minus 140 dBm per hertz. The same as uh, true of uh, other equipment such as uh, amplifiers. So the signal is set for 30 dB noise for the opening measurement. Again, <clears throat> we're going to use uh, WSJTX as our measurement vehicle, our receiver, and the signals that are being sent were previously transmitted um, from a WSJTX and that was done in a previous session. At the top we have a pan display and the pan display will show us the spectrum on the bottom and the waterfall on the top will give us an idea of our signal strength. And you can see with the noise set at minus 30 dB we have a strong signal indicated by the orange and yellow squares and uh, we don't see much impact on the noise, on the spectrum scale of noise. There's our signal. That's our first sample. And we see it has quite a bit of gain above the noise floor. And we see a nice strong signal, that orange uh, signal in the waterfall. The measurement comes back at 3 dB signal to noise ratio at our frequency of 1500 Hertz. And again, that's my call sign that I use in it. So uh, in the first sample, we got a measurement of 3 dB signal to noise. Our second sample is just finishing. I've turned the tone down so it doesn't disturb the narrative, but the uh, tones clearly are still there. I've just edited them in the uh, post-production process. So now we have 4 dB. The signal strength was originally set to about 6 or 7 dB, so we've lost 3 dB of margin uh, with a minus 30 dB Gaussian noise uh, signal. Uh, not quite a one-to-one -one, uh, is, is what we're going to see on the losses. So here I'm setting the noise level uh, up to minus 24 dB. I'm going to increase it in 6 dB increments. Now we re had 2 dB on the last measurement, a signal to noise ratio, and so now we're starting with minus 24. Previously we had minus 30 dB um, was our gain that we had applied to our a noise, uh, white noise base. And the, the noise is broadband. It's across the spectrum from 200 hertz to 4,000 hertz. So it covers uh, virtually the whole receive channel. Uh, we now measured 1 dB signal noise ratio. So we've lost a little bit of margin as that noise floor uh, starts to approach our signal level. It's still a long way from it, minus 24 dB down from uh, where the 
uh, the signal is or th thereabouts. The second measurement is again 1 dB, so we have seen a degradation of about 2 dB from our uh, previous levels. I'm going to go over now and we're going to go from minus 24 to m minus 18 dB, so it's a 6 dB increase in the noise floor. And we see it in the waterfall uh, because our signal is no longer a strong orange, it has a lot of yellow mixed in with it, and we start to see the noise floor rise across the entire receive bandwidth in the spectrum display just below the waterfall. And so our first measurement at minus 18 dB is a minus 2 dB signal to noise ratio. So now we've lost about 3 dB uh, with the increase of the noise floor of 6 dB. So we're losing about 1 dB for every 2 dB increase in the noise floor. Here's our next sample. I cleared the screen so we can capture the next set of measurements. And our first uh, measurement at uh, minus 18 dB again is minus 2 dB signal to noise ratio. So we're starting to see the impact of the noise. It'll become more pronounced as we get closer to our signal level. So now we're going to go from minus 18 to minus 12, another step of 6 dB, and we're going to see a more pronounced effect of the Gaussian broadband noise uh, upon our FT8 signal. We're going to wait a few seconds here, about 10 seconds, for our next sample to start. But if we look at the waterfall, we see it's now getting uh, fairly sparse. We no longer see the bright orange. We see a bit of yellow, but it's a more pixelated and, and scattered. So we can see in the waterfall that we've lost uh, some reception. First measurement is a minus 6 dB signal to noise ratio. The second one is a minus 6 dB signal to noise ratio. So we've lost 4 dB of margin when we went up in noise by 6 dB. So at minus 12 dB in white noise, we're seeing a minus 6 dB signal to noise ratio. And we're seeing the waterfall change quite uh, dramatically. It's no longer that bright uh, orange. It's now a scattered yellow. Once more, we're going to increase the noise from minus 12 dB to minus 6 dB and see what the impact is on our measurements. And we'll begin with our first sample here. As I said in an earlier session, this is a loop on our noise <coughs> and signal source, so it'll just keep going in rotation. And our first measurement's a minus 11 dB. So we're at the point where we're losing almost 1 dB and signal noise ratio for every dB we have is an increase in noise. So our noise is approaching our signal level <clears throat> because we're seeing that one to one change. Notice the waterfall, we can hardly see our signal anymore and we're seeing a rise across the spectrum in noise. Now our second measurement is minus 12 dB, which signal to noise ratio, which means that we've lost 1 dB in margin for every dB in we've seen increase in the noise level. So the two signals are approximately equal uh, because the denominator is dragging down the numerator, which is our signal strength. If we increase it once more and we go to 0 dB in the gain of our noise, we're going to see a, a significant deterioration because now the noise <coughs> is overwhelming the signal at this level. If we look at the waterfall, uh, we see that we can 
can't even find a signal anymore in the waterfall. It's completely gone. And if we wait, we'll see that there's no uh, signal decoded. So the decoder was unable to detect a valid signal uh, at this noise level at 0 dB. And we'll wait and take one more cycle to see if we get any signal. Again, the waterfall is uh, a very good indicator that uh, we're not going to see anything uh, decoded. The signal is just has too many errors in it. So let's step back and go back down to minus 3 dB. So we'll drop down below 0 to minus 3 <clears throat> and see if our uh, detector, WSJT receiver, can detect a signal at this level. And it's just decoding the first sample now, as we see by the motion indicator. Uh, we don't see much in the waterfall. We see something. And we got a, sig a re decoded signal at minus 14 dB signal-to-noise ratio. So we gain back about 2 dB for the 3 dB improvement, <clears throat> that is the 3 dB drop in the Gaussian noise across the band. We'll take one more measurement just to confirm that uh, reading of about minus 14 dB signal noise ratio, and there it is. We got minus 14 again. So this test illustrates uh, the effect of Gaussian noise. Once Gaussian noise starts to approach the signal level, it's a one-for-one one loss in signal noise ratio for every decibel that the uh, Gaussian noise increases. Now I'll analyze the results of our uh, broadband noise test of FT8. So let's summarize the experiment. We made measurements at our test channel, which is, begins at 1500 hertz. The standard test signal was used. The transmit level of the test signal was held constant at 6 dB signal noise ratio. We injected Gaussian noise in the band of 100 to 2500 hertz, which is the pass band of WSJTX in this case, and we mixed that with the signal. We varied the noise from minus 30 dB to minus 3 dB and recorded the signal to noise ratio as presented by WSJTX. The results showed that as the noise levels rose, the signal-to-noise ratio generally dropped uh, as expected, and it reached a low of minus 14 dB. The uh, Gaussian noise was raised further, but we could no longer decode the signal. So the question is, why couldn't we decode the signal down to minus 20 dB, which was our expectation from the theory we described in an earlier video and from the notes that uh, Joe Taylor has furnished on the internet? Well, here's an analysis of what was actually transpiring. And keep in mind, this test is a very specific set of conditions, ones that you would not normally encounter uh, in the actual operation in the hand bands of WSJTX. So this is a representation of our signal uh, in the orange and the noise in the blue in the passband of uh, 12500 hertz. I've defined some terms which will help explain what's going on. Uh, the first term is SNRM, which is the measured um, SNR. That is the SNR that is reported by JSTX. And to get that ratio, JSTX uh, has to d measure 
a, uh, the power, the noise power, that is the noise in, injected in this passband. It also has to measure signal power, which I've designated as S sub n. So the power of this signal, and it's the ratio of those two uh, metrics that are reported. However, in theory and in practice, there is a true uh, signal power, which is somewhat different than what is measured, and a true noise power. So what we'd really like to understand is what is the true signal and noise power. Well, as I said, the measured signal noise ratio that presented by WSJTX is this ratio, but the measured uh, signal power is really the true power plus a portion of the noise that lies directly under the true signal. And that's just because of the mechanism one has to use to measure uh, power when performing digital signal processing. Uh, we would take the total uh, true power of the passband that we injected and we could subtract uh, this uh, equation here uh, to compute the portion that was underneath our particular signal. So the measured power includes the noise underneath it and by the way the measured noise power includes all the signals that are in the passband. So these measured power and the measured signal noise ratio is an approximation of the true signal to noise ratio. In fact, the signal power, the true signal power, is actually much lower than the measured because the measured includes the noise. So the reported signal to noise ratio that is measured is actually higher than the actual signal to noise. So we had a reported level of signal noise ratio of minus 14 dB, but we can be sure that the actual signal to noise ratio was lower, and we would suspect that in fact it was on the order of minus 20 dB, which would match the theory.